Hi folks, we've got Miss Katie here, and if you hear any howling in the background, it's Buster, our oldest orange kitty, whose nickname is, not coincidentally, Howler. Yeah, you heard him there. What do we have today, Miss Katie? We have World at War, issue number 72. Why am I excited about this issue? The Great Airborne Assault. And and how do I normally feel about Airborne? You don't like Airborne. I don't like, you Airborne. Don't like Airborne. But why does this issue excite me? Who's involved in it that seems unusual? <laughs> Not the Dutch. <laughs> well, the Dutch are involved, right? Yes. And who's involved with the Dutch? Japanese. And what are the Japanese doing? What do they want to air drop on? They want to see something. Ooh. Oil refineries. Oil refineries. Because what doesn't that. Japan have? Oil. Oil. Very good. So, we're excited because this is about seizing of economic resources. And as your husband, a former logistician as well as an armor officer, says, oh, 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 that's good stuff. <laughs> All right, we're going to get ready to head over to the table in a minute. Thank you, Miss Katie. Thank you. Hi, folks. It's Dr. Smith, i.e. Smitty. And as Miss Katie showed you, we have issue 72 of World at War. And why are we excited by this? Because... It has things you're never supposed to do. You're never supposed to break contact with folks. Palembang, which is the Japanese air assault on the Dutch refineries. And now why is that important? Because as Miss Katie explained to you earlier, Japan has no oil and really no natural resources. The failure to get this oil would be a serious problem for them. So that part of the whole thing for the Greater uh, East Asia co-prosperity sphere was what? The seizure of economic resources. Have to get the oil, don't have it, their military shuts down, their economy shuts down because earlier that year, in 1941, the summer of 1941, FDR embargoed oil from the United States. So Japan is running on a timeline, they're running out of the oil. Now, as always, we give you some reading material. Our, our favorite, our, our turn to always, is done against Victory at Sea. It's a good overall, everything that you want to know about the Pacific. It's sort of my go-to book. There is the old classic, hi Patsy, John Toland's The Rising Sun, which although it's about the same size as Victory at Sea, seems about 50% heavier. Maybe it is more words than then, of course, we've got one of our favorite little books, Japanese Naval Vessels of World War II. When I had built at one point the entire Japanese battleship fleet in model in Hasegawa. The Hasegawa and I think there's another model company, but this turned out to be invaluable. And there is also Wilmont's book, The War in Japan, the War and the Balance, and this is a little later than our period. Now why is this so important, this assault? Because had the Japanese not gotten it, they'd have run out of oil. But even more interesting is at this point, we still have the ABD-8 Command, the American, British, Dutch, and Australian Naval Command. And had they done better, had they sunk a couple of the transports, couple of the key transports that were taking the land forces that were coming on this assault from the Dutch refineries, the Allies would have probably had enough time to completely demolish the refineries. Japan would have run out of oil by 1944. How does World War II play out if the Japanese are out of oil in 1944? Ooh, I'm thinking not good. How about you? As always, we thank you. We got, we'll look at some of the other stuff in the game itself here in a minute. Thanks. See you in a minute. 
Hi folks, it's Smitty again, i.e. Dr. Smith. We're looking at the new World at War issue number 72. I can even see about my glasses on today. That was even with doing all the roses. Actually, I did three of the big roses and deheaded them. But nice cover, and like I said earlier, it was like, oh no, not a British Airborne one. And who came to see us? It's her Miss Frankiness, her divineness, and she is on, of course, the map. Hi, sweetie. Let's shush you off to the side. And she's gone. But, nice cover. You know, somehow they start to look more like books now. And, of course, the counter sheet. Nice counter sheet. And we have, what makes this so interesting... Japanese airborne units down here we've got Dutch British and over here we've got British some Italian and German but of course what you really want to see are the maps so here are our maps and 100 mile an hour overview right but here's the Primasol bridge one and of course your objective hexes and she's back Hi, sweetie. What I like is in the middle, you've got the CRT, the terrain key, the terrain effects chart, the command point tracks. So everything you need to use is neatly set up here, like here, eliminated units, airstrikes, reinforcement. But the one I really like, of course, is Palin Bang. And we'll look at the Pal and Bang map here. And of course, this is, of all things, a Japanese air assault in 1942 to seize the Dutch refinery right here. The, BM, the BPM Bravo Papa Mike refinery. So, this alone made this game very exciting for me and very interesting. And so I went from going, ugh, an airborne game to, oh my God, something unique, fascinating, because it is a Japanese air assault. And of course, we've got the World War II drop table, which would be different than today. And of course, the turn record. As always, we thank you. We'll talk to you later. Bye.